what's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares. That's right, we're back, continuing on with our daily journey through the nightmares with the fourth film in the Hellraiser franchise, but actually it's also the final theatrical release overall. It's Hellraiser Bloodline. Hellraiser Saga takes place in the 22nd century on a space station where a scientist recalls his ancestry and relation to the creation and evolution of the puzzle box and his long driven battle against the evil Cenobite Pinhead. Well, that was weird. This film serves as both a prequel and a sequel simultaneously. I had mentioned in my review of the third movie that I actually really enjoyed how it ended and the tease that it had for a fourth film. And now that we're talking about said fourth film, I can now tell you what that scene was. Our lead character in the third film decided to hide the puzzle box by burying it in a pit of cement of a building project. And that building turned out to be a skyscraper and the internal design of that building looked like a Cenobite puzzle box. And that opened up so many questions and I was so excited to see what they did with that. And then this movie starts off in space, in the future. And then it flashes back to the 1700s, and then it shoots over to the 90s. It's kind of all over the place, just because it has that bloodline thing in the title, as it follows around this one guy's bloodline throughout the ages, which I guess is fine. There are certain things that I liked about that. The 1700s story talks about the creation of the puzzle box itself, which there's plot holes there, but it was cool to see it being made. The 90s actually showcased that building that looks like a puzzle box, which is awesome. It doesn't go the direction that I would have liked to see, but at least they didn't fully ignore it either. The stuff in space, I don't know why it had to be in space. It just seemed like a corny, kooky thing the 90s sometimes did with horror. I would say like in Jason X, but that was early 2000s, so never mind that. I don't know. The bloodline idea was probably better in concept than it was in execution because I felt like it really was all over the place and convoluted, more so than did I ever think the movie was good as a whole. But yeah, this is the last theatrical release. It'll be interesting to see where the series goes from here on out, for sure, because one thing that was definitely consistent thus far was the penchant to focus on practical effects and creative gore. Same can be said for all four films, and Pinhead even has a couple of great zingers in this film as well. My personal favorite is when he goes, I am pain. Or, I am so exquisitely empty. Perfect, man. Perfect. So even though I thought to myself that I'd hate it going in, I ended up having an okay time with it. I think it's certainly watchable, engaging, and entertaining. It's nowhere near as well made as the first three movies, which had a better pacing all around since they were pretty good at being a slow burning horror film, while this tries to be a little choppier and faster paced, and for some people I'm sure that'll work. For me though, I didn't like it as much, and I can see that the series could have easily ended here. Heck, it could have pretty much ended with any of the movies so far, but like a good horror icon, they had to find new and different ways to keep bringing Pinhead back again and again and again. In terms of negatives, I would just have to say that this film features a lot of people I do not care about at all. They're either unlikable all around or they're just, they're just empty, which sometimes seems worse. Pinhead is always great though, and he easily carries the film. And obviously I had already mentioned the fact that the movie feels a bit convoluted in its storytelling. Let's go ahead and break down my final score. From an unbiased technical vantage point, I think this film is fair. It's still going the extra mile in its creative department during those practical effects that it has. Some of the lines of dialogue from Pinhead are still fantastic and it at least still feels more or less like the story is continuing. But everything else was mostly business as usual and in fact the editing just made the film feel convoluted. So this score is 64%. My bias score or just how I felt about it in general is a bit higher because I'm still enjoying the franchise as a whole and at this point I was unsure if I would. I guess the real test comes next time since the next movie is not a theatrical release. We'll find out though. My bias score is 68% and when we combine the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 66%. 66 out of 100 possible stars or a C plus letter grade. 
Guys, have you seen the fourth film, The Hellraiser Saga? If you have, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with the next review. And until then, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one. Critic.